So, hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about the crystallographic uh, analysis of silicon carbide. Uh, I've been working on with uh, Dr. Phil. So, the key goals of the work was uh, were to, to explore the crystallographic structure of silicon carbide uh, and then to compute the texture, the grain boundary structure, and uh, to determine if uh, these samples were uh, uh, exhibit like distinctive microstructure. So, and uh, if it's the case, we wanted to determine whether this microstructure were related to manufacturing process of the samples, and uh, also if we can like relate them to the performance of those samples. So um about the texture so the texture is like generally how grains how the grains of the sample are oriented for example uh, here we have a sample with uh, his rolling direction his transit direction and the normal direction pointing up and we have a cubic grain there oriented uh, along the 011 axis and uh, uh, an example of texture is like uh, can be seen here with wood, where we have all the fibers oriented like horizontal. So the main steps we followed during this work were to prepare the sample and then explore the crystallographic structure using the low, uh, low vacuum EBSD system, and then to compute the texture and grain boundary structure of the sample. So to do so, we got two samples from the same plate, from the same silicon carbide plate. Uh, usually to do texture analysis, we need like huge scan with uh, five to 10,000 grains. But we were not able to do that with these samples because they were, as it's silicon carbide, it was like really difficult to polish it. And we had a lot of noise also when we, tr we were trying to get really uh, big scans. So at the end, we decided uh, instead of doing uh, big like big scans, we decided to do like uh, a lot of small scans, but at different areas to get something more accurate for statistics. So we did like nine, nine scans for each sample, three at the left, three in the middle, and three at the on the right uh, of the sample, and then we plotted the texture and so on. So here are examples of what we got from the EBSD analysis. We have these two uh, maps. They are just examples of uh, the maps we get like right in the middle for each sample. And uh, the dark areas are low uh, confidence index areas uh, we just get them out. And uh, these samples, uh, sh uh, uh, we observed that there's a distinct uh, texture that shows that that shows an annular pattern around the an axis oriented about 65 degrees from the sample normal direction, and this is something we did not expect because uh, usually with uh, powder materials there is no specific texture, so it's like random, and uh, we are still waiting for like information about the manufacturing process from the team from the team just to check if according to the literature is something we would expect and um, as continuation for this work uh, what we are planning to do is to study if the texture and the grain boundary structure of uh, ceramics using low voltage EBSD we just got uh, According to the annealing temperature, like if there are effects on the, the texture related to the annealing temperature of, uh, of uh, samples. So we got some samples from Joseph. This first one was not really useful because uh, we had, like, as he said, a lot of um, irregular grain structure on this sample. So we are still waiting for new samples just to continue. Thank you.